Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 807 on WMAL. Brian Eamon, Brian Wilson with you. About a half hour from now, we'll go back in the <laughs> Wayback Machine That's to right. July of 1952 when UFOs were seen all over Washington, D.C. Yeah, for mean, several weeks. It was in the paper. That's right. Uh, it was the military was asking questions. The president, President Truman, was asking questions. It's it's a sort of just a fun thing to do well, on this July morning, but I, it's sort of interesting. We have a lot of questions still today, 60 years later, about what actually happened in Washington in July of 1952. We'll talk to a uh, ufologist about that, Kevin Randall. Should be fun. We'll do that about a half hour from now. Also, have a, a roadkill study. <laughs> I love that story. To tell you about. Uh, that's all coming up, but we do. We do have to get serious, and uh, Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf is on the line, and he is very concerned, as are a lot of people in this area, because it's a a big defense industry. Washington, D.C. is. A lot of people work at the Pentagon, work around the Pentagon, a lot of private sector jobs, a lot of public sector jobs that could be affected by sequestration, which is set to kick in on January 2nd, 2013, just really a couple of months from now, unless something happens with Congress. Congressman Wolf, good to have you on the program. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. Sure. Good to be with you, Brian. All right. Uh, so the latest number I saw was about 1.1 million jobs could be at risk if uh, sequestration takes effect, which by another phrase is just massive defense cuts. Um, where are we right now on that? Is there any effort to try and stop this from actually happening? And can it actually happen before January 2nd of 2013? Uh, there are massive cuts in defense. There are also massive cuts in non-defense in FBI and many other areas, too. I do not think it will happen. I think it will be postponed, and uh, I think what you're going to have to do is have one grand bargain, and it's going to have to be part of it uh, early next year or perhaps right after the election. And my own feeling is I think the only way out of it is to pass something like the Simpson-Bowles Commission, which puts everything on the table, deals with the entitlements, deals with the tax earmarks that we have, and in one comprehensive package. But as you know, President Obama appointed the Simpson-Bowles Commission and then he walked away from it. But that's the only solution out there that I think. But I do not think sequestration will take place. All right, but if it waits till if it waits till next year, then will we see layoffs? And will we see? No, I don't think. No, I don't think you, you will not see sequestration between now when they're talking about coming into place. I think what you'll see is a postponement, and then with perhaps for six months, give the new Congress, the new administration, the opportunity. And at that time, you're going to have to deal with the entitlements. You're going to have to look at all these things. You're going to have to deal with the tax earmarks. But it has to be part of a comprehensive approach rather than just kind of fixing a little bit here, a little bit. Because if you fix it for one year, it comes back again. It comes back again, and we go through this again next year. That's not the way to have a strong economy. The way to a strong economy, one time, big package, Simpson Bowls, everything on the table, and then you can deal with it. And we're one debt deal away from having a renaissance in this country to really get America back to be number one. So both sides have to say, hey, we're going to have to come together. It's not going to happen before November, but thereafter, uh, I I think it will happen. I do not think there's going to be sequestration. And I think the president, frankly, has failed us by not embracing Simpson-Bowles. Here it's like somebody, you appoint a commission, you then empower them to look at everything, they come back and you pretend they're not even in the room. But is this any way to use an old phrase to run a railroad? It is not. I mean, it's, it I mean, it isn't. I mean, this just sends the message to the business community and to those who are, you know, looking at a shaky economy that you know we can't get our act together to do this. Well, I agree with you. In fact, is I think the answer you're going to see more people in the next couple of months come out and embrace Simpson Bowles. We had a vote on the floor about two months ago. I was one of 38 that voted for it. We were split, half Republican, half Democrat. That's the only solution. To go and talk about little here and there, you're going to have to do it in a big, bold way. We're spending 24 to 25 percent of GDP from the federal government. That's that's four to five percent above where it's ever been. And you have these tax ear earmarks. 2010, Brian, you paid your taxes. GE didn't pay a penny of no. taxes, and yet they were one of the largest taxpayers in China. And so you got to close those tax ear earmarks. You got to fix the entitlement. Simpson Bowles would say to you, if you're 50 years old, and I've seen you guys, you're about 50, aren't you? Uh, I'm not quite there yet. Hey, hey, Wilson hey, Wilson's hey. a little bit over yeah, that age, but 50, we won't talk. Well, if you average out, you guys are 50. <laughs> that means you're going to have to work one more month 
to save the social security system. Yeah. Are you not? When I go into high schools and ask the young kids, do you believe the social security system is sound and will be there when you retire in the last three and a half years? Not one senior from Langley High School all the way out to the Shenandoah Valley has raised their hand. Oh. They know what the Congress doesn't know, and they know what the administration doesn't know. So would you not be prepared to work one additional month if you're 50? Okay, but we, you would. We, uh, yeah, yes. But fact, when you, you guys would, are probably going to want to work to 70 or 75. Yeah, sure. In this business, we never last that long. <laughs> but let me let me ask you this. You talk about you're going to need compromise from both sides, and I guarantee you there are a lot of Republicans and conservatives who are saying, well, that compromise means tax increases, and Simpson-Bowles does include some tax increases. It, it, Can you it actually revenue, get, it, re, it, it, it lowers the tax rates. It lowers well, the tax rates, but it broadens the base. It, it gets away with many of these deductions that you currently have. For instance, if you have a big second home well, down in uh, Palm Palm Springs, you cannot write off that whole mortgage deduction. Well, let me it put it let me put it another way. Space, but it, but but it lowers the tax rate. Let me put it another way. Is Grover Norquist on board with Simpson Bowles? Well, I never signed the Grover Norquist. I know, I know you did it, and I know, I, I, I know that you're not the same Edmund with Burke, Edmund Burke. Would have never signed the Grover Norquist tax. But I, my I question mean, still stands: a, Would Grover Norquist be in support of, of Simpson Bowles? And can you actually get something done? Would I you think, get enough Republicans if <laughs> it is considered a, a tax increase by Grover? Well, I can't speak for Mr. Nor- Norquist, but I'll tell you, I have never signed his tax pledge. The only pledge that I I make is to the people that I represent. I will never sign a tax pledge to a registered lobbyist who gets that tax pledge and puts it in a secret vault. I mean, that is <laughs> Edmund Burke. Do you think Edmund Burke would have ever signed? Do you think? Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I want to change topics very quickly, okay. uh, and that is the Dulles Rail Board, which uh, uh, is the, it's also the MWA, I guess we call right. it, right? MWA, yeah. MWA, they're doing the Dulles airports. Rail matter. They they manage the airports. Right. And there have been a lot of questions, a lot of reporting about, uh, you know, some some sort of sketchy stuff that's been going on over there. What do you think about that? Are, or do you find any confidence in the way they are conducting their business? Uh, as of now, no. And the reason you know about the sketchy stuff is that I got the inspector general at the Department of Transportation to do an in-depth investigation, and they're finding that this place is out of control. Now, Secretary Ray LaHood was in my office yesterday. He's just appointing a new uh, lawyer who will sit over there, who's in school in ethics, school in procurement, who will be full-time over there. Plus, I have a bill that has passed the Appropriations Committee to put a full-time inspector general over at MWA, the airport authority, because no, they're out of control. Some of the people that have been appointed to there are using this for their own own good. I mean, we passed a law a year ago almost to put more people on, and the district won't act, they won't act, they won't see Governor McDonald's people. The board, as of this moment, is dysfunctional. There are some good people on the board, but overall, it is dysfunctional. Look at some of the trips they've taken. Look at some of the bills that they've done. And we, so, but I think this IG, full-time, in executive session looking, because what they do is they go in executive session, and nobody knows what they're, what they're doing. The IG will sit in the executive session. But Ray LaHood is committed to cleaning the place up, and he brought by uh, the person that he's going to start having over there every day, and then when our IG passes, there'll be an All IG right. there every day. All right. Congressman Frank Wolf from Virginia, good to have you on the program. Hey, thanks. thanks very much. Thank you both. Okay.